So one day, and I'll close with this, this thought, I was in my office and when I was university chaplain and, and I had a very, very busy schedule that day and I was telling Mark Greider this story this week. And I saw a familiar face duck his head into my office and he looked at me and said, Pastor, do you have a moment? I'm back from China and I have photos I'd like to show you. I knew, my, I knew what my schedule was like. I was so happy to see him. I got up and, and I embraced him. I, I said, why don't you have a seat in my office? And then I ran over to my secretary who was a few feet away, jumped over to her, and I whispered, is there any way I could have 15 to 30 minutes cleared so I can be with Phil? And you know secretaries really rule the office, so I had to ask. <laughs> and, um, and she said, Pastor, I can clear it if that's what you want to do. I said, let's do it. If there are people I can meet with again later in the week, let's clear it. Jumped back into my office, and I just felt like the Lord had touched my heart to give undivided focus to Phil. Because Phil is one of those who said yes to the call of missions. And when we had the big missions chapel at the university, Phil said yes. And Phil became our leader of our China team. And not only that, as he showed me the photos in my office, I noticed something. And Phil was holding a baby, just a little tiny baby in his arms. And I noticed that he had the milky bottle and he was feeding the baby, and he and, and there were photos of the baby in different clothes, and each time Phil was holding the baby, and I said, Phil, who's the baby? Phil looked at me and said, well, actually, that's my baby. I said, okay, I'm really confused. He said, I adopted this little girl until a family comes through to adopt her. I'm her foster dad. And I said, Phil, I am so proud of you. I don't think I could do that. And what you've done is awesome. This child is going to be forever changed because of your love. I said, show me more photos. And he showed me more. And then he got up and he was about to leave. And I felt that presence of God again. Just show him my love. Just show him my love. So I said, Phil, wait. He turned around and he looked at me. He said, Pastor. And I went up and I held him. And I prayed over him. That God's hand would be upon him. And thank you, God, for Phil, who's been so faithful. God, I know you're so proud of him. And then I let him go, and I said, goodbye, Phil. I'm proud of you. He walked away. Two weeks later, in China, traveling on a train with a travel partner of his. The travel partner would tell me about it later. He said, I watched Phil. He took a deep breath and was gone instantly heart attack at the age of 28. His dad had died the same way at the age of 32. There are moments in which I believe that God is tapping our heart to pause for a moment and recognize that he is love and that he so loves the world and that's not captured to a thought and an emotion of 2,000 years ago. He is love. So in our busyness, in all the things that we feel we must do, in all the ways we want to be doing God's business and being busy doing it. Is it possible that God is saying, pause for a moment, just long enough, just long enough in a busy schedule to love on a family member, to love on a friend, to love on a co colleague until they recognize that God isn't looking to zap them and simply judge them. Oh, the day will come when he's their judge, all of our judge. But he's merciful, loving, and kind. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each and every person that's hearing my voice right now for your calling upon each and every life. God, sometimes we don't see ourselves the way we, you see us. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we'll get a glimpse of how you see us. Not as religious. Not as carrying around our truth bats and clubbing people over the head but instead as those that will stand for righteousness, but do so in a way that loves, that redeems. Father, heal every wound in this place right now in the name of Jesus. To everyone that is listening to my voice that is wounded, that is empty and hollow and desiring to be able to be used by you and to know you and to be close to you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, your Holy Spirit will tap hearts right now. Say it's your moment. I'm drawing you near. Return to your first love. Hand of God is here. He's tapping hearts. And 
I'm going to ask you that if you will be bold enough to do so, that as Jeff is ministering to us in just a moment, that this will just be an open altar. And if you've had the concept that God is distant, if you've had the sense that God is favoring others, but you somehow are lost in the process, if you've been wounded and judged by others in a way that has been religious judgment, but right now you need to be held by the arms of God, the altars will be open to you. And if you're here today and you've never asked Jesus to be your Savior, or you wonder whether you're a part of the family of God, will you join with everybody right now as we pray this prayer together? And if you mean it with all your heart, I want you to know that God is listening. And this is your moment to have no doubt whatsoever of your relationship with God through His Son, Jesus. Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins. I want to live for you. I know you died on the cross for me. You are holy. I am a sinner. I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are my Savior, that you are my Lord. I am a part of the family of God. Let's give God a clap offering right now, right where you are.